Emily, welcome to the show. I'm so excited that you're here and I can't wait to chat more about continuing to invigorate your messaging with you. So before we dive into the episode, tell us a little bit about yourself and your business and just how you got started doing it all. Hi, Jenny. We're super happy to be here with you too. Um, so I am um, a native of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, I am 51 years old and um, have been entrepreneurial from the get-go. I grew up um, surrounded and immersed in theater and music and have just always been a hugely creative soul. I sold Avon on my school bus when I was 10 and got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, and I sort of was just from a very young age, just always entrepreneurial um, and like to do many different things at once. Um, so I have a uh, master's in broadcast journalism. Um, I've studied with Shakespeare and Company, been in an improv comedy troupe. I've taught women's studies classes. So, so I've just, there's a, it's a the range is sort of amazing. But the, what's interesting to me is the theme throughout my life. And since I was a little kid was ordering uh, things. And I think a lot of that was, it was my way of uh, centering myself um, and having some control around of my surroundings, which I didn't always feel that I did. So from a very young age, I was organ. I would go to my friends' homes and organize their bedrooms, um, and and I loved it. And their parents <laughs> loved it, of course. Um, and then for me, whatever my work was, it was always about supporting uh, whatever creative outlet. I was pursuing at the moment. So I waited tables for many years to support uh, work in the theater. Um, and, and then ultimately I um, started a cleaning company uh, to support some visual art that I was doing, as well as a couple of radio shows that I was hosting and producing. Um, and that cleaning happened, it also turned into organizing. So it was a cleaning and organizing business. Um, and that began because a friend of mine was hosting a birthday party for me. And she said, look, I just, my house is a mess. And I'm like, I will clean your house. Don't even worry about it. And when I was done, she was like, oh my God, I, I want to hire you. So that was the impetus for that. And, um, uh, and that, you know, I've, I've lived in many different countries all over the world. And um, I finally landed in Boston and, Boston has always been home and I fell in love with it. Um, and I was trying to figure out um, what I could do to support myself. And it, let me just backtrack for one second is that seven years ago, I became really ill and it just detonated my life. So that's when I actually had this initiate, uh, initial cleaning and organizing business. And it took many years, I guess I'm in my fifth year of healing right now um, to recover. Um, and so the question was, well, what do I do to support myself that I can control the hours and the places that I work? And um, so I started to work for TaskRabbit. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of that. Yep. And I became, I was living, at this point I was living in Jersey City and I became the number one tasker in New York City, which was really interesting because I had no idea that I was in that uh, place. Um, uh, and then I moved back to Boston and continued with TaskRabbit and I was very lucky and got a client who said, you know, you should go out on your own and I'll connect you with everybody I know. So that was the impetus for me going out on my own. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, I worked in the corporate world, so I have a little bit different of a background, but it's always interesting to hear about people's journey to yeah. you know where they are now. And a lot of creatives do, you know, work side jobs and things like that yeah. to support their creative hustle because it's not exactly. always um, as profitable as it needs to be in the very beginning. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. And I'm in that process right now. It's like, okay, should I get a part-time job to help support right. what I'm doing right now? It's really or, tricky because yeah. how do you schedule wise, how would that work? You know, exactly, exactly. I, mean, I do this full time, but I would love some extra money right. and for the time being. So yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Um, but that's so cool. So when you're working with TaskRabbit, were you doing a lot of, um, cleaning and organizing as well, or were you doing other tasks too? Yeah, so not, that was totally incredible. I had an opportunity to move to Jersey City and live there for a year for free. And, and I had always wanted to, to spend a year in New York. So I took that opportunity. Um, and I was coming from Maine at the time. And so it was a lot of culture shock. And I also was still very unwell. And I actually didn't, I couldn't figure out what was really wrong with me or get the healing I needed. So 
it was my 80 year old aunt who told me about TaskRabbit because I was applying for all these jobs in a vacuum of my apartment and nothing was happening because mm -hmm. I'm one of a bazillion people in New York City. And um, I applied and very quickly got hired and then I was off to the races. And it, for me, it was brilliant. It was, I felt like it was created for me because I like to do many different things. So I was writing and editing and I was in and out of um, incredible apartments and closets. I wasn't doing any cleaning, but a lot of organizing. Mm -hmm. um, I was hosting parties. I was transcribing really cool interviews. I was writing uh, bios for people and film synopses for the IMDB. Mm -hmm. um, there was no limit. I would be home watching um, Kardashians and I'd get hired to do some research on something. So like I could work off my couch. Yeah, um, that's really cool. You know, I got to go to all of these amazing neighborhoods. I was in a Hasidic neighborhood uh, creating a smoked salmon platter on Purim because the Hasidic family wasn't allowed to handle the dish, you know, this kind of food on that particular hot. So it was, it was endless. I was in all of the boroughs and I was in fashion houses and startups and testing new phone apps and um, so cool. it was super cool. And it's like cool that you didn't have to limit yourself to just one segment of work. Right. Well, you choose the categories yeah. you want to work in, you set your rate of pay and when you want to work. So it's really, uh, it was ideal. Yeah, that's so cool. I've, I've looked into that before, but I never ended up going with it because I'd heard good things, but I was just like, I don't really know. And so. Well, it's good, but I mean, there's downsides for sure. Um, yeah. One of which is they take 30%, which is a great deal of money. So you have to yeah. charge enough to make enough. Yeah. And that's... then you have to pay your own taxes. So Exactly. So it's, yeah, that's similar it's... to Upwork. Um, they also take like a, oh. fee. so it's, you have to charge like you know, more than what you would initially charge right. I and mean, you feel bad because that person is like, you know, they're kind of like, well, it's well the way to get know. around that, then they could arrest me for this or just kick me <laughs> off their platform is that like, once you work for someone, you can just say, you know, if they want to hire you again, and, and usually they will ask, do you want to do, take this off the platform so that they can pay you in cash? And you're yeah. Good. I think that's a, like, that's a better way to go at the end of the day. Like oh once you get hired on, because you're not losing that money. They're right. not losing that money. And, right. you know, as long as you trust that person that they're going to pay you, then what's the yeah. deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So with your organizing business, um, like what, what really got you? Um, so you got hired by someone you said, and then he, they told you to start your own business essentially. And then, so that's when you just started with your business essentially. Yeah. And I, so the other thing that happened is I had another client um, who needed a landscape architect and I happened to know of one and I referred them to her and this landscape architect said to me, I'd like to invite you to my networking group. Mm -hmm. And I immediately was like, Oh my God, yes, I'm totally coming because I love to network. And, um, and then she said, well, it's at 7 AM. And I, <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, I don't know <laughs> if I can do that. So it took me a while to, to actually commit to going. Mm -hmm. um, and then I thought, well, whatever, I'm just visiting. Um, and I went and it was really interesting because I walked in the room and I, there was people that I, I'm very um, empathic mm -hmm. um, and I really function from how I feel. Um, and there were people that I knew in that room from 20 years ago when I had previously lived in Boston. There was a woman in there who was a very famous rower who's now has a plumbing company. And I had taught about her in one of my women's studies class, classes. So I was like, oh my God, like this is so seemingly meant to be for me. Um, and so I went home and I, the cost was $700 to join. Okay. Um, and there was an application fee and then there was going to be quarterly dues. So for me at the time, that was an enormous output of money. Um, okay. And so I thought, well, what do I do? And I thought, well, you know, I don't have a web presence. So let me... I'm going to put my money into that. Um, uh, so I did that. And then I had this very nice website. And then I'm just sitting in my home because I'm a natural networker, but not sufficiently to truly build a business. Mm -hmm. And most of my life, I've flown by the seat of my pants, which is okay, like 20s, 30s. But when you're 50, it's a totally different thing. <laughs> yeah. And um, I'm always the last to wake up to how old I am. So, <laughs> so it was just like, okay, this is just not... I can't do this anymore. So, um, so then it just became this pros and cons list and it became really apparent to me that um, the most that I 
I had the money. I was just really afraid to let it go. And, um, and I just thought, look, the worst thing that can happen is there is no worst thing that can happen. Um, I, I actually only have something to gain by sitting in these four walls. Even if I, it doesn't move my business, it's going to move me in some way. It's going to, it's going to seep in. And, and the knowledge in that room is extraordinary. Um, and the other piece for me too, is that I, I need, I feed off of other people's energy. So I'm not good left in isolation or to my own devices. And I have to really be consciously put myself, um, with people and, um, and not just people like people that I admire that are, um, sort of functioning at the top of their game in ways that, that are really important to my value system. Um, so I joined this group and virtually instantaneously it, it paid off. So, so that was the beginning. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I've always heard that, you know, the people you surround yourself with are, you know, how you will be in the long run. It's so so I can, I can totally. It's true. And it's, you yeah. know, it's not, it's not a necessarily an easy thing to do because mm -hmm. you may feel, and I definitely did like, first of all, it's amazing to me that I was brought into this group. So, so there was a reason for that. So whether I had the confidence or not, I must have, to me, I must have been meant to be there and I did measure up, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's not easy because these are longstanding business, business people who are really successful in it. And again, at the top of their game, um, uh, but it's true. It rubs off. You end up, um, performing and growing and reaching and existing, um, at a level that you want to. Exactly. Yeah. Whenever I go to conferences with other business women or bloggers and things like that, I always leave and I'm like, whoa, I feel like I can take on the world now. Cause I Isn't was just it like, amazing. Yeah. It's like, you're just around all these amazing people who have really great stories and they're doing great things and it makes you just want to further your self and your business even more than before. Yeah. And, and for me, um, the thing about the networking group is their entire reason for being there is to help you be better and to grow. And that's unbelievable. Yeah, of course. And then once you like you get past like, okay, I need to invest this amount of money. It all becomes worth it. You know, you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons of that. But in the end of the day, it's like, you're getting that community built in, in your like purse in person, not just online. And like, I think that's great. And you get to see yourself in action. Like I also know that because I'm a stage person and I, I, I really love being in front of people um, and I really wanted those opportunities again. And, and I was really too scared um, to go back literally to the stage, but I, but this would give me not every single week I had to stand up and with a honed message with a 45 second ad for my business mm -hmm. um, a, as well as give these eight minute presentations on a regular basis. Um, that's incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, that is cool. Yeah. I definitely need something like that. I'm very introverted. So when I do things like, you know, host this podcast or, you know, video, anything like that, I, that's like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Cause I'm not really, I'm not really into that. I I'd rather just, you know, hang out behind my computer, write a blog post, things like that. Right. But video and like audio are a lot like a different ball game. So I try to put myself out of my comfort zone like daily because it's yeah. amazing. It's amazing what that does. And it takes so much courage and it's so scary. And it is always unbelievably rewarding more than you know you, you could ever imagine. Um and I, I find that constantly especially when you find the group that is truly there to lift you up. Like there's nothing like that. You exactly. Know? You need to find your community and those people that you really resonate with. Cause you know, um, especially I feel like in person, it's even more powerful. Like I have a group of yeah. online friends who yeah. are really uplifting and really like in the yeah. same space as me and things like that. But when I found that community in person, it was even more magnified. It was like the energy was just 10 times more because you know, you're physically there with those people. Right. And everything is about, for me, anything, everything is about connection and relationships with people. Nothing matters more to me. Nothing fulfills me more. Um, 
and so and, and also communicating for me, which is my entire reason for existing and to be as honest and open as humanly possible. All this gives you constant um, pr uh, opportunity to to practice that you know, and to grow in those areas. Of course. So kind of going back to, mm. um, you know, your why and mindset and things mm. like that. How big of a role does mindset play in all this, like your business and just in general, like kind of networking and all that? I, I really, really love this question because um, mindset is, is everything. Um, it's, it is fundamentally everything. So I was sick for many, many years and could not, I just went downhill emotionally enormously. And I, I really believe that my illness was a huge gift and still is and keeps on giving because I had to do some profound spiritual healing. Um, and there was no way that I could heal without that peace. Um, and it's the same thing with, with business. Um, uh, and it's really hard to to do that in a vacuum, uh, running a business, building a business is unbelievably hard and it's just a roller coaster. Um, and so inevitably there's going to be massive dips. Um, and so how do you, how do you weather those? Like if it's, if you don't have support um, or tools, like you won't, why would anybody? Um, and so for me, uh, this group, uh, has has been profoundly important uh, for me maintaining and resetting uh, my mindset because um, I'm human. Of course, I'm going to sort of go through the gamut of reactions and responses to whatever my business is doing or other things in life. Um, and the other thing that's enormously helpful for me is to hear about other people's failures because failure is the most phenomenal thing I think that exists because we can't possibly grow without it. And I've had so many, I can't even tell you. <laughs> and, um, and I've grown from every single one. And, and particularly when I listen to like these, these business people that I respect so much and I hear about their monumental failures when they started out, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And they not only survived it, they thrived. And, you know, it's so helpful because it takes people down from the pedestal that I inevitably put people on um, and they're human and nobody knows, nobody has the, the answer, the magic answer. Um, it's a process for every single person. Um, yes. So. That's great. Um, so going back to the, your, how you said that your illness really like brought you into a different space. That's really interesting to hear because I, I've heard a lot of different things. I've heard people say that it's like, it was like mind opening for them or other people who are like on the more of woe is me. Like it didn't, you know. And I was there. Yeah. I, I was so there and it was actually, it's the worst place to be. But it was, I was just thinking, my, it was my mother's 93 year old companion who said to me at one point, because I was so down and out, I was living with my mother in her retirement community. I mean, it was like ridiculous. It was something out of a, a movie. Um, and he came to me with a book of poetry and he said, point blank, you're, you're feeling completely, you're just feeling so sorry for yourself and you can't do that. And you have to find community and faith. And I moved back to Boston after that experience. Um, and I did, and it was really interesting. I ended up, um, finding an extraordinary, uh, person that was going to help me facilitate my healing because he gave me the tools, but then I had to take, I had to take on that responsibility. Um, I had to own it. I had to own my own power. Um, and I think I'm going on a tangent, so I forgot. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyway, um, yeah, so there was absolutely the woe with me and I was stuck there for a really long time. And then I found um, a temple, an mm -hmm. extraordinary temple that was really spiritually based. And I call it the sort of, it's sort of the land of misfit Jews, but it's more just like the land of, of human beings. Um, and no matter where I was going, I was emotionally at any given time, I was completely embraced. Music, I joined a choir. That was huge for me since music is so much a part of me. And singing is, is incredibly um, medicinal and cathartic and healing for me. Um, and then I found this, um, 
networking group and everything just sort of started to happen. I will tell you, I walked through hell and back in the process of finding the right healers and being taken down to my knees. Literally, there were times when I could not walk. I was in excruciating pain for a very, very long time. Um, I had wished to be taken away. I just didn't want to exist anymore. Um, and then somehow I did, because I really, it's, it's hard. I can't talk about any of this without just talking about the spiritual aspect. Even in the darkest moments, I was definitely being held. It was definitely, I wasn't aware of it at the time, but now I know. So I really, these moments that just are awful and sort of suck in the process of whatever it is I'm doing, um, they're, they're vital. And the other piece that I really love is my business would not be what it is if I hadn't gone through this process. So my business is profoundly spiritual. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have the empathy or the ability that I do to connect at the level that I do without having walked through all of this. Well, I'm very happy you were able to, you know, kind of come out of that dark place oh, and, you, you know, have it start your business and just really help you, you know, mm. make a great change in your life. That's mm. great. That's awesome. So what is your number one tip for people who just are feeling like they're down and they're never going to get anywhere and, you know, in life or even just with their business? So it's vital to look, um, that sort of hibernating. I want to curl up under the covers. There's a really important place for that. Um, and I don't dissuade anyone from doing that. That's sort of part of the process is sometimes you have to go inward but then it's, it's, it's vital to call a friend or to show up uh, or, or make a coffee date, make a, make, make a tea date once a month with, with a friend that you feel just totally gets you and loves you and lifts you up. Um, and, and, and community, I, can't, I cannot stress it enough. Um, it's imperative. Like I, we, we don't... We, we're meant to be in relationship with other people. We can't exist in a vacuum. So, so for me, having a place that I have to go to every week at 7 a.m. to be accountable, to show up, even if I walk in that room and I just feel like crap that day or I'm having a hard time for some reason, I inevitably sit in that meeting and, and think, oh my God, I love this group. I feel completely different than when I walked in the room. Um, and, you know, most of the time, most people are going through a ton of stuff that we have no idea they're going through. So, um, and a myriad of things simultaneously. So it's important, it's just important to be in, in community on a very regular basis. I, I totally agree. I feel like if I did not have people in my community or my tribe, essentially, then yeah. I would be where I'm at today. Yeah. Because I, you know, you need that support, whether you're introverted, extroverted, whatever you need. Oh my God. Kind of support, whether it's your family, your friends, people you found online, like business friends that you just need someone at least yeah. one person to. And it's them. also, yeah. And it's really cool to be in a group of, of diverse people because then you get to see, yourself in relation to others uh, and other minded people. Um, I mean, as long as they sort of have the same basic moral and value system, um, I think that's really important because for me anyways, I want to be stretched and challenged. Um, you know, otherwise what's the point? So exactly. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I have a group of girls who I talk mm. to on a daily basis and we're not doing the exact same thing. Mm. Like some of us are doing social media, some are doing like web design, different things. We're all like doing services though. So that's like our one thing that kind of connects. Right, right. The common thread. Yeah, we can we can all connect and talk and you know have different things, but we're not direct competitors. So. Yeah. And and the genius that comes from other people that of things that you just can't see because they're right in front of your face or because you're in the midst of the thing. Like that's what I love, you know, yeah. no, and it's the, funny. Cause my husband will tell me things and I'll be like, no, no, you know, but right. then someone else will tell me the exact same thing. That's like in business. And yeah. then I'm like, Oh, a light bulb goes off. But it's yes, like my completely. husband just told me this two weeks ago. Yeah. 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 Well, it wasn't the moment and you needed the perspective <laughs> or the distance or he's too close. You know, it's exactly, it's, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you don't have your own business. So how do you know? You know, it's like, yeah. not really, but I, <laughs> and the other things that are really important to me too, so the, the strength of women and the diversity of women in my group are mind-blowing, but also the men. There's an incredible mm -hmm. group of men 
um, who are super female positive and empowering and supportive. And that's enormous for me is to have mm -hmm. both of those. Yeah. That's um, yeah. So I feel very, very lucky. From my experience with men in business, and I mean, I haven't really worked with them directly or anything. I've just seen a lot of, you know, a lot of guys in this space. Mm -hmm. So it's really great when they're, you know, they're really, um, interested in being promoted as equals and things like that, because a lot of the time I see it, like, you know, they're dominating everything. So it's nice to have people who are, you know, Humble. interested in both things, like yeah. women and men being yeah. successful. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So what inspires you to continue doing what you're doing with your business? Um, it's, it's the, the clients, okay. um, quite honestly, they're, I'm walking into an incredibly sensitive space. And as one person said to me, um, you're actually seeing people in a more vulnerable space than a therapist does because I'm, I'm walking into their literal, their physical space. Like the, the, the place that they close the doors and nobody else gets to see, exactly. I see. And so it's profoundly important. And I drive this message home constantly um, of what a safe person I am and how empathic um, and what I hear over and over and again, and sort of fairly quickly is, oh my God, you have no idea what a relief this is that you're here. As well as, oh, I'm really embarrassed that I need you to be here. Yeah. Um, and then for me, it's sort of, there's nobody that doesn't need support in some way. Like as we've been talking about, everybody does. And everybody has a closet or a drawer mm -hmm. that they don't want anyone to see. Um, I don't care who you are um, and, or how accomplished you are or how overtly put together you are, you know, what, what's happening at home is completely different. And so the other piece that I know from my own personal excavation is that your physical space is, is profoundly important. And if you walk into that physical space and you feel good looking at every single item, if it's feeding you in some way, that, gives you the opportunity to, to be and to go wherever you may want to go in your life. And it's really hard. And, and it, your physical face is such a reflection of where you are at any given moment. So the, all that stuff is fascinating to me. And if I can support someone or, to get to move, to move or get unstuck in some way, it's, it's uh, endlessly gratifying. I totally feel you on like your space is like a reflection. And to me, it's like when my place is dirty, I feel like I need to clean instead of yeah. doing work because it stresses yeah. me out. Right. But I'm still just a very messy person in terms of my home. But my planner and everything else in my life is very organized. It's like my house is a thing that takes like the, um, you know, it gets put on the back burner because everything else is super organized. Yeah. And also, and, and, you know, people are busy. So if that's not your natural bent, I mean, I work with sort of two camps of people, one who are outrageously organized and it's bizarre. You think, why would you ever need me? <laughs> and they do because they're busy mm -hmm. and it's making them crazy that their space isn't what they want it to be, but they don't have the time or the energy. Um, mm -hmm. um, and then the other camp that's just sort of challenge like that's just not an area that they can do well in um but they they know they they want it to be differently so they want it to be different so um it's a really amazing gamut of people but it's really i, I also just really love meeting people exactly where they are in any given moment mm -hmm. um and i'm very very i'm a quick study and i can read people and energy and spaces very quickly so i can i can sort of step in exactly where i'm needed and I'm also really clear about um, when it's not a good fit. That's also massively important because um, um, I actually am number one in the picture. And so if, if the process isn't going to serve me, mm -hmm. there's no way I'm going to do it. And if it's not going to serve me, then it's definitely not going to serve the client. Exactly. That's something I've had to learn because I mean, I'm, I've just wrapped up my first year or so of business and you know I was taking on these clients that didn't really resonate with me but I just needed income mm -hmm. and after right. uh, after that I was like uh you know that's not really worth it to me <laughs> it's it's so funny because I had a client in New York a very wealthy woman who was having me come in on a regular basis and she was a hoarder but a really organized hoarder uh -huh. 
And I would leave that job so sapped of my life force. It was a nightmare. And I, mm-hmm. and I kept going because I was so excited that I was making money regularly. Yeah. And it was a really old friend who said, you know, you can fire her. Yeah. You can say no. And I, and I needed somebody else to tell me that because yeah. it didn't occur to me. I was like, holy shit. Oh my God, you're right. <laughs> and I need to. Yeah. This is not... I'm not helping her for sure. And I'm here under sort of um, sketchy, pr- you know, because I want your money. That's why I'm yeah. here. And that's not a really, that's not, for me, it was not a good reason to be there. Yeah, of course. And it's like one of those things you just really need to realize because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're in a corporate job, you're assigned all the work. You got to do it no matter what. But when you work for yourself, it's, you can say no to people um, if it doesn't, you know, work yeah. for you because you're going no, to be happy. No is huge. No is awesome. Yeah, I, I finally learned how to say no uh, a couple years. months ago, and it's it's been game changing. It's revelatory. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, now we're gonna go on to the three questions that I ask in every single yeah. interview. Um, so, what does it mean for you to be an entrepreneur, and what's your favorite part about it? Um. To be an entrepreneur is starting and forging something that's completely unique um, and created and owned by me. Um, And what was the second part of that? Uh, What is your favorite part about it? All of that, that it's, um, that I have ownership, Mm -hmm. that I'm uh, answering to me, um, that the sky is the limit. Um, as to what I can create and achieve. Um, the freedom is enormous. I'm a very outside of the box person. So it's, a v- it's very rare that, um, that there might be a space that I'd be comfortable in working for someone else. I need a lot of latitude and freedom. And um, so, yeah. I completely agree. Freedom is my favorite part too. Yeah. Uh, and just being able to set my own schedule and, you know, kind of work with who I want to work with and, you know, not, I'm not a morning person. So, you know, going in at a certain time every day is not my cup of tea. So right, um, it's just nice to have that, you know, freedom. So, um, what is your favorite tool that you use in your business? This can be like, um, like a digital tool, online tool, or like a planner or any of that thing. Like it can be physical or, or digital. It doesn't matter. Just something that really helps you in your business. Um, I'm an app freak. I love yeah. apps. So, and it's actually really, I always love discovering new apps and also being able to share them with my clients. So if it's an organizational tool, um, like archive, um, you know, for, for storing art, um, planner apps for myself, like I love Todoist, that really helps me. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, I constantly learning, um, about app. And the other tool is my connection. The other, I forgot to mention earlier that I'm a member of the National Association of Professional Organizers and my local chapter. And that's a tool for me. It's unbelievable. So if I ever have a question, I can reach out to this community. I'm a huge online person. So um, there's an answer at my fingertips. That's awesome. Um, and it's, again, it's an unbelievably supportive community of women, um, which is incredibly inspiring. So um, and my label gun, of course, is like my go-to. Yeah, <laughs> I love I mean, that you, thing. You can't, you can't organize without that. <laughs> no, that and um, uh, I really love anything that's eco-friendly. So okay. um, if that's a garbage bag or um, the recycling center is a huge friend of mine. Um, that's awesome. Okay. And then lastly, who is your go-to business resource? This can be a girl, a guy, just someone that you feel inspired by and they really just resonate with you. There is a lawyer in my group who I am completely, I, I adore her. And I, I was intimidated by her when I first uh, came into the group because she was a lawyer and it felt like, oh my God, you're a lawyer. You're really serious and really smart. She's the most awesome human being. Um, And she's a client and a friend and a business resource and my lawyer. And who knew that I would ever have a lawyer? That's so adulty. (laughs) And and she really was appalled that I did not have a contract and a client agreement. And it took me a while, but it became crystal clear that I needed that. And she is brilliant and uh, created something that was black and white. um, So no questions were left 
unanswered for myself or for the client in terms of um, what they can expect from me, what I bring to the job, um, the responsibility, the client's responsibility, my responsibility. Um, and every, anytime I have a question, uh, we text constantly. Um, so I, I'm very lucky. And, and I will tell you that I actually have a, more than a handful of these people because of my networking group that I can call at any given time. That's great. Uh, I feel like a lot of creatives forget about like yeah. contracts and things like that because they're like so totally. wrapped up in the creative element that they're yeah. like, oh, wait, I actually need to have legal stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was kind of the same way. I mean, I formed my LLC right. from the get go, but contracts, I was like, oh, I know I need to do yeah. this, but how and what? And, you know, I was like, and then I got so, spurned. So I was like, okay, now I really need to do this. because Well, right. This exactly. That's what, right. So, um, and the business part of the, the, the huge thing for me is the networking group has really been like going and getting an MBA really quickly. Um, and that's the part was my weakest link. Um, and then the thing that the things that I learn and I'm able to take on that I had little confidence I could manage before are so empowering. And it's so cool when you're like, Oh, I can do this. I can do QuickBooks. I can do yes. I can manage. And, and, and I find out that, Oh, I actually like them. It's just a muscle that was not exercised, yeah. you know, earlier in my life. So yeah. use the analytical side of your brain. <laughs> yeah. So where can, um, everyone find you on the web? So your website, social media links, anything like that. Yeah, um, Room to Breathe Organizing is my um, I'm also, uh, you froze up. Can, did I freeze up? Okay. Uh, hold on. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry. Okay. That's uh, okay. Um, so I'm just going to my Instagram account right now. So, so um, Room to Breathe Organizing. Uh, is my Instagram account. I'm on Pinterest at Room to Breathe Organizing. Uh, room to Breathe Organizing .com is my website. Um, uh, I'm on LinkedIn uh, with my name, Emily Sharon, which is C-H-E-R-I-N. Um, and I'm on Facebook. There's a Room to Breathe Organizing Facebook page. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me. I had a great time well, and I was me happy too. to have you here. It was a thrill. Thank you so much, Jenny. Take care. Thanks.